Memory Transcription Subject, Captain Sovlin, United Nations Fleet Command. Date, Standardized Human Time, December 5th, 2136. Sitting behind the helm of a ship felt cathartic after my long absence from the captain's chair. Tyler volunteered as my co-pilot while Anzo lounged in the back seat. The Yortul seemed too casual for our current suicide mission. Even with the UN's distraction, there was a chance the Yaksa would come after us on our descent. Dominion forces were concentrated around Silas's supercontinent since circumplanetary targeting was not an option. While the unique geography narrowed the staging points available, it also condensed settlements into a single region. That meant less bombs were needed to cover the planet. Our plan was to slip the shuttle in on the ocean side as the Terrans hounded the Greys head on. I wondered how our original defensive line which had vanished into the atmosphere would factor in. Perhaps they can cover our arse during atmospheric re-entry. That's if they're not involved with the rescue themselves. Those vessels would be the easiest ones to sneak down to the surface given that they didn't have an axe or buffer in the way. Getting back up to orbit would be a challenge though and the Greys watched for evacuation ships. Small patrollers weren't built to tow more than a handful of passengers regardless. Outside help was required to rescue entire platoons. Tyler blinked his icy eyes. Take us in, Sovlin. Godspeed. You would think predators would build guns into evacuation shuttles, I grumbled. Might be helpful for your trigger-happy pal to shoot anything that moves. In most events that we're using these, it's a dire emergency and we're abandoning ship. These aren't average transports. Onzo narrowed his eyes. But why can't we abandon ship with guns? I don't build these things. Are we going to sit here and argue about this all day? This was no time for playful banter. Action was picking up on the viewport. The Terran fleet moseyed in with purposeful movements and ensured that the Arxas spotted their advance. Dominion vessels rushed out to meet the numerically inferior armada, leaving the ocean side open. I increased our acceleration and broke out of our lower mission's glide. Until now, our shuttle had been taking a quiet course to flank the enemy. It was impossible to tell which ship was commandeered by Captain Monaghan. Carlos and Samantha were in over their heads, alone on sensors, but I trusted our replacements to pick up the slack. The worst Terran crew member was probably more fit for service than the average herbivore. Humans were nothing if not competent in combat. We just needed this distraction to work as planned to reaffirm that very idea to the Greys. The Terran Armada dispensed a few explosives to attract attention. The Greys took the bait once their unsophisticated brains zeroed in on the UN's aggression. Backing down from a duel signaled weakness. The humans and the Arxa were both obsessed with not appearing infirm. Pride was a shared trait between the two predator species, and seemingly our primitive Yortul. I was unconvinced Onzo wouldn't run off and get us killed the second we landed. My eyes darted to our data feed. It seems like our side is getting their snouts bashed in. I hope this is worth it. In close ranged combat, the UN was unequipped for a confrontation without resorting to tricks. The humans' front line was getting picked off several at a time, evidenced by the explosions in the viewport. I wasn't sure how much time they could buy us, so I kicked our speed up another notch. No Axa had come to intercept our shuttle, and we had breached Silas's high orbit already. My heart was hammering in my throat, all the same. Perhaps my fear was for the crew we'd abandoned. Our minimal numbers couldn't resist an Axa charge. There were less than a thousand vessels in the Shadow Fleet. The Dominion had six times that ship count at hand, and were using most assets at their disposal. Following their humiliation across the sector, this was personal. Rare instances of teamwork sprouted, with the Greys ganging up on wounded Terran craft. We need more numbers. Surely the UN defensive line is coming any second, right? Blips blinked onto my radar as friendly contacts emerged from Silas's orb on cue. The Arxa had learned that humans practiced ambush tactics and their rear flank was ready for the sneak attack. The enemy vessels swiveled around on a dime, unleashing munitions with prejudice. The resurfacing Terrans lobbed explosives back, desperate to stem the tide. The Grey's onslaught was unrelenting, with minimal attention given to any inbound missiles. Pick up the pace, Tyler barked. I imagine we're pulling all ships back at any moment. I sighed in exasperation. <sighs> I'm going as fast as I can. Do you want the ship to break apart on descent? Onzo bared his teeth. Is it better to get gunned down up here? As the humans say, no guts, no glory. There is no glory in being scattered across Silas's orbit. What is wrong with you? Yeah, I think we need to wean you off Earth sayings, buddy. 
You interpret them all with the utmost aggression, the blonde predator muttered. I'll try again. Ah! A predator! Its eyes are forward-facing, and it flashed its teeth. The Yortul utilized a high-pitched voice and faked an occasional stutter. It's an evil abomination and needs to die. That better, Tyler. Uh, you're too much. The primitive was distracting me from my approach, so I shut his antics out from my mind. The shuttle obeyed my commands, its slender frame humming softly. I offered a final bit of juice to the engines and they answered with a hearty push. This would be a tricky entry, but there was no option to follow safety guidelines. If the Axa circled over to us, we would be easy pickings. Marcel and Slanik's survival relied on us getting through to the planet. I'd rather take a riskier path and know I'd done everything in my power to save them. Everyone on board the shuttle was willing to gamble with our fates for our comrades' good. The thought of the duo in an Axa farm made my blood simmer. It was an unacceptable outcome. Both of them had suffered enough at my pause. The shuttle blazed towards Silas's azure surface and I leaned forward with concentration. The Shadow Fleet was pulling back while the UN defensive outfit covered them from behind enemy lines. Those re-emerged friendlies followed suit shortly after, dipping back into the Tilfish world's atmosphere. A few greys gave chase, not wanting to let the Terrans slip under the radar again. Two Axa cruisers changing course and targeting us for interception, Tyler growled. I gritted my teeth. They won't catch us. They won't try to follow this descent. My claws smacked the throttle lever and pushed us well past recommended output. We hurtled towards Silis at a breakneck pace while the Axa clocked in at sensible speeds. Their vector lessened the distance between us, for it wasn't closing the gap fast enough. The planet ahead was enlarging much quicker and our trajectory scraped the edge of the atmosphere. Humans built for durability, so I had to trust that emergency shuttles could take a beating. Actively accelerating into a descent was madness, and even Tyler looked nauseous. The shuttle frame quivered from the stress, sending jolts through my body. Controls offered erratic responses, and I warred with the steering column. Alarms blared from the main systems, warning of excessive heat. The temperature climbed on the interior accordingly, as whole shielding failed to contain the environmental effects. Incineration was an agonizing way to die. An undercurrent of fear ebbed through my veins. I cobbled myself together enough to check our sensors. The Axa contacts were pulling back, and our track on them was spotty. That meant they were losing us as well. I hurled all power into reverse thrusters and corrected our descent angle. The harness dug into my shoulders as it restrained me during the sudden shift. Tyler's face had gone ashen and he squeezed his eyes shut. The massive predator was not enjoying the turbulent ride. The shuttle's velocity slowed, though not before our hull had taken a beating. <sighs> I've got it under control, I gasped out. <sighs> Going to bring us in low and fly to the stated coordinates. Tyler groaned. You unstable neurotic Gajid. You were about two seconds from getting us cooked. No goods, no glory. <laughs> Sovlin's none of the yurts all after that stunt. Onzo yipped. Don't insult me like that, I thought to myself. I grew up with electricity. I leveled out the shuttle's flight course once we neared the choppy water. The waves were a blur at our speed, zooming by as I gunned it toward our location. It was dizzying to look at our surroundings, but the human was gawking all the same. It was rare to fly with such quickness in atmosphere due to civilian traffic and hazards. You don't realize how fast supersonic flight is in space. Tala pressed his hand to his chin and turned his eyes toward me. Here you can tell what our velocity is. You see the world zooming by. I drummed my claws on the console. There's no time to waste. I'm just keeping enough altitude to clear any buildings. Marcel's coordinates are inland a bit. You did great, Sovlin. But hey... I'm still not sure it's a good idea for you to make an appearance. Marcel visited me in jail. I hope my presence will not be an undue burden on him. I will comply with whatever his wishes are. Our shuttle cleared wide patches of ocean and another yawn crossed Tyler's face. The census officer hadn't slept since the battle commenced. I suspected the big predator craved a distraction. He could chat anyone's ear off if he got started on a topic he liked. Perhaps he'd be interested in joying about his family. The shoreline would be visible within a minute, so he just needed to stay awake a little longer. I cleared my throat. <clears throat> What's something you did as a child that you cherish, Tyler? Right on. Me and my pops used to go out to the lake, rent a boat, the human reminisced. We'd sit out there for hours and shoot the wind, you know, enjoy nature. Our relationships become estranged. 
but I miss fishing with him. We caught some real buttes. Your favorite childhood pastime is water hunting. Your father took his kid to do this. Hey, chill out. It's not like we ate any. We just caught him on a hook, took a picture and threw him back. That... Then what was the point of catching them? Just when I stop thinking of you as predators, you say shit like that. You torment fish for father-son bonding time. Onzo suppressed a growl. I really cry, predator. But that is twisted and unnatural. It would be fine if you were seeking food, but you were just doing it for kicks. It's just a way to relax, man. And maybe some humans do like hunting, so what? It's not like we're killing them. Disgust swelled in my chest, hearing the predator discuss hunting as relaxing entertainment. I could picture the blonde beast on a boat, giggling as he toyed with the suffocating fish. To think that a father passed those behaviors to his son. How could an empathetic species consider that a socially acceptable pastime? How did Tyler not see how fucked up that hobby was? I brooded for the rest of the journey, scowling out the windshield. Buildings blurred beneath us, alongside charred ruins and mushroom clouds. There was no telling if Marcel's corner of Silis was intact. That human, who I knew was vegetarian, would surely recognize the ethical flaws in his packmate's sadism. I hadn't thought Officer Cardona was a vicious animal before now. Tyler tapped on my shoulder as we landed. Shit, I'm sorry. I know that's a sensitive subject for you guys. I was just thinking about the one time my dad was proud of me. And it was that. W well that's fucked. Your father instilled heinousness in you. P parents have a responsibility to teach their kids good values, I managed. Right. We cool. Yeah. Let's go kill some Arxa. I couldn't look at the primate the same, thinking of him learning predation. Humans claimed that they didn't hunt in the modern day. Noah said their meat was grown in labs. Clearly that wasn't the whole truth if Tyler had no qualms about his family outings. How could any feeling person go along with that? Tyler admits Terrans are violent and bloodthirsty. Sometimes those base instincts must be given higher consideration than their empathy. Humans pleased themselves with moral laws. Progress was still needed on the specifics. When hunting was ingrained in their ancestry, it made sense that remnants persisted into their civilized era. The predators just needed an introduction to proper values. I was certain well-meaning brutes like Tyler could learn that animals weren't playthings. I parked the shuttle on a sidewalk in close proximity to Marcel's coordinates. With the Axa traipsing about, this was no time to relapse into human phobia. Onzo snapped his gun up and clambered out into the open. I checked my surroundings before raising my own weapon. There was nothing around us besides the faint glow of dawn sunlight. Marcel, do you read me? Tyler croaked into his radio. It's me, Tyler. Your better half. We've landed, but I don't have a visual on you. The pavement was rough beneath my hind legs, and the air felt acrid in my throat. I steered a wide path around tillfish bodies in the street, as did the human. Terrans were adverse to death on the Gajid cattle ship, but this was a different response. Tyler had a case of the shakes rather than wanting to puke. His binocular eyes twitched in an odd way. I wondered darkly when his last meal occurred. Muzzle flashes appeared on our periphery and I dropped to the ground on instinct. The human herded Onzo into a storefront. I scurried over to them on shaking legs. Bullets peppered our refuge as Axer enemies rallied to our location. The raiders had established a heavy presence in the city. What if they were looking for Terrans to round up? The blonde human tossed an explosive into the street and high-pitched growls echoed through the air. Peeking through the broken glass, I saw mutilated greys soaked in blood. Whatever Tyler deployed sent shrapnel in a wide radius and caught the aggressive beasts off guard. The surviving enemy circled back to regroup, giving us a breather. Marcel, tell us you're still alive, bro. We're right on top of you and there's no signs of friendly activity. Have you relocated? Tyler panted. The Yotol blinked his dilated eyes. Let's get back to the ship. I think they're... Shit, Tyler. It's good to hear your voice. Gunfire sounded in the background and audible scratches surfaced from Marcel fumbling his radio. We're in the sewers. Need backup ASAP. That information gave me the adrenaline boost I needed. I unloaded a magazine at the approaching Arxa posse in the hopes of pushing them back. Marcel's packmate jerked his pupils downward and rushed over to a manhole cover. The predator searched for a lever, finding one with his hands. Tyler tugged at the mechanism and robotic systems popped the hatch. 
Onzo growled as he took down a grey with a well-placed shot. The Otal protested when Tyler pulled at his shoulders. The primitive was the first to descend into the manhole. The human insisted on being the last one to enter and hurried me to the ladder next. I hopped down the runs, jumping into the mucky tunnel. Tyler dropped onto the ground, landing awkwardly on his ankle. He'd sealed the cover behind him and I hoped that would delay our attackers. Thankfully, our shuttle could be locked to human biometrics. That should prevent the Axa from running off with our ride. We didn't need the same problem I had on the Harchin's blissful modernity. Ah, my leg is fucked. Double time it, people. The tall Terran barked. Onzo, if you ever wanted to charge in, now's a good time. Now that we were in the tunnels, I could detect the same gunfire I'd heard on the radio. My ears assured me the fight was still ongoing, but Slanek had already been wounded before this clash. With Marcel's duck guarding his Venlil buddy, there was no telling if he could best the Arxa. His band was lucky to survive on Silis this long. I channeled my inner Onzo, dashing off like a madman. This was my opportunity to save the human I'd brutalized and give some meaning to his decision to spare my life.